Hello everybody. I'm just making an up-to-date video of my system down here in my basement. When I was in the planning stages of this, I like to watch uh, videos from other people's systems just to kind of get some ideas of uh, what they would do, their setups, especially in the kind of similar room sizes that I have. Uh, so I just thought I'd do something up to date. I posted some of these videos before, but uh, it's uh, June of 2019, so time to update things a little bit. A um, little bit about me, I'm 59 years old. I got my first uh, stereo system back in 1974. I've always loved this stuff. I'm uh, more into the, uh, the music end of things than the, um, than the uh, movies. I enjoy watching movies down here, but uh, I have a priority on uh, music reproduction down here, which uh, so I tried to do the best of both worlds as much as I could within one room. Um, so I'll go ahead and grab the camera and get started and kind of give you some of my thought processes along the way. Uh, I'm not a professional by any means. Uh, it's going to be pretty obvious, but uh, I've learned some things along the way by reading um, other people who um, have experience with these kind of things. Some professionals, some amateurs like myself, and... Uh, some trial and error as well. So let me go ahead and grab the camera and kind of give you some looks at what's going on down here. So bear with me, I'm not professional and far from it. And okay, so I'm going to start off with my screen wall if I can get the camera to hold steady. Behind that screen wall is some equipment. I keep it back there uh, just to keep it out of the way. And it's fed through some of these raceways back here like that one down there and some more down there all the way down to this area as well so back behind that stream room are uh, my two uh, pre-amplifiers one of them is a home theater processor the Marantz AV8802A which I use for home theater obviously and uh, for music, for two channel, I have a balanced audio technology, two bass preamp back there. Um, I was uh, was enamored with the tube sound. I went out and purchased one used uh, just to see what it was all about, and I really like it for music. It, uh, you know, it's used for the lack of a better uh, term. It brings a little bit more uh, warmth and uh, the instruments sound a little bit more um, natural to me with the tube based preamp back there. Uh, now a lot of the stuff that I bought, I bought either um, dealer demos for a substantial discount or used. But whenever I do buy um, dealer demos, I always try and make sure that there's a warranty with it. And if I buy used, I make sure that I have some kind of recourse. I like to pay with PayPal because if something comes damaged or not as described, um, I have some recourse with it. So starting with the system itself, if it's a, just a 16 by 9 silver ticket um, off-white screen. I, f I forget the screen color, but it's just uh, nothing fancy. It was less than 300 bucks delivered to my door, and like I said, uh, music's my priority. But that screen does a good job to me, um, in my opinion. For as much as I use it, um, yeah, it looks fine. Um, and then, as far as the projector goes, that's my Optima uh, HD33. It's just 1080p. It does uh, 3D. So that's the video part of the system. It's a nice projector. I'd like to get, you know, a 4K maybe someday, or at least a, a fake 4K or a full K, whatever you want to call it. But this does a really good job for now. The black levels could be a little better, but that's nothing, uh, nothing awful. So coming back over to the to the audio equipment on this side. I'll start off with my amplifiers. These are the uh, Musical Fidelity M8700 Monoblock amplifiers. So the XLR cables come from the other room for my uh, audio processor, my home theater processor. And so uh, those feed through that raceway right over there. So if I'm listening to music, I plug the XLRs into the uh, tube preamp in the back. And if I'm watching movies, I just pull them out of that and put them up to the Marantz. So that's a Class AB monoblock amplifier. I bought that uh, dealer demo, got it basically half price, but with a full warranty from the manufacturer. And up above that is my music server, that's the Sony HAP-Z1ES. 
I have a lot of music files on there. It'll do DSD, high res, um, whatever. So that's what I use, and I uh, think sounds really, really good. Um, and then coming over to the left, I might as well start with the speaker before the sub. That's uh, Aerial Acoustic 7T, I believe, and a lot of people will tell you that speaker placement in a room is a, a very important, especially for um, for music reproduction. As you can see, that thing's probably close to four feet out from the back wall, and uh, you have to give. Um, speakers uh, room to breathe if at all possible. I understand that I'm lucky that I'm in a dedicated room and some people don't have that luxury. You have to have it in a shared living room or something and that might give you more restrictions as far as speaker placement especially if there's a wife acceptance factor in place she might say no put them back by the walls I get that but if you can take time experiment um, you know even experiment with things like toe in and toe out, and uh, you'd be surprised how much incremental uh, changes in your speaker um, position can make. So there's my absorption panels on the side wall over there, and some of the back wall too, and up above on the soffit. I took uh, the better part of a day, and then beyond that, really positioning these speakers to get the best performance um, sound-wise out of them that I could. Uh, so. They're bi-wired. Now those amplifiers have two sets of speaker binding posts on it and these can be bi-wired so I went ahead and did that. I have the MIT shotgun speaker cables connected to the mids and highs. That's the one with that box on it. And then I have the Oracle um, speakers down on the bottom binding post down there. The one with the yellow and black um, for the bass, for the um, woofers I mean to say. And uh, so the way this Martin Logan sub is hooked up is the amplifier uh, also has a line level output. So the XLR cables come into the amplifier and then I have an RCA feed out from the amplifier and into the subwoofer. That is the Martin Logan um, de step high. 380 inch drivers and a 250 watt amp in a sealed and servo controlled cabinet which is what I prefer um, they don't go nearly as loud or as you know somewhat as deep as the uh, ported subwoofers like the big SVS and I know guys love building Marty subs and all that those really big cabinets with the 18s in them but that wasn't uh, what I was after I wanted uh, those are great don't get me wrong but I wanted something with a little bit more control and uh, like I said with my uh, system being geared for music that was really important to me so that's the reason for that then coming over to the middle here is my uh, digital to analog converter or DAC that is the MyTech Brooklyn Plus as you can see right now I'm listening to an um, I'm sorry an MQA CD and let me see if I can get a good angle on this thing so you can see it a little better that's playing at 352.8 kilohertz and 24 bit and that little blue light down there in the corner indicates that it's unfolding the MQA file. That's a great DAC. It really sounds good. I believe uh, that DACs definitely make a difference. Um, you know, there's DACs out there that are thousands and thousands of dollars. And, uh, you know, another thing that I will say um, while, be, while I'm thinking of it is just because something is bigger or more expensive certainly doesn't mean it's better. Um, so that's just my thought process on that, but that's a really good DAC. I've got uh, a couple different things plugged into that that I'll kind of go through. So right now, that's what you're hearing is that uh, that Oppo BDP105 is plugged into that DAC, and it's playing an MQA encoded CD, which is what you're seeing right there. And then also plugged into that is my music streamer. That is the Blue Sound Node 2i. That will do um, MQA right out of the box. It doesn't need to run through that Brooklyn to do the second unfold, but I do it anyway because I like the Brooklyn better, the sound of the Brooklyn better than the, the deck that's built into that Blue Sound. The Blue Sound's a great value. If you're looking to get into MQA and, wanna, and you want to spend 500 or less, I highly recommend that. The center channel speaker, I'll pop the cover off real quick. That is the uh, Aerial Acoustic CC3. 
it does, it's not a match to um, my main left and right speakers, but it does a really, really good job um, for center channel dialogue. I used to have a uh, definitive technology center channel speaker that was much bigger than this, but this one sounds much clearer and uh, sounds a lot better in my opinion. So um, another thing I should mention is I think that if you have, if you're able to, put a dedicated um, circuit in for your home theater, you should try and do that. I just, I just had one installed and really couldn't believe the difference that it made. It's a dedicated 20 amp circuit that I have my amplifiers plugged into and uh, my preamp in the back. And it definitely made a difference. Um, also in the back, I should mention that um, I have more amplification in the back behind that screen as well. I have a, uh, a five channel, um, they're all Rotel amplifiers in the back. A five channel for my center and my two side surrounds and a six channel for my Atmos speakers and then a two channel for my rear speakers. And so uh, that's just the rest of the front wall over here. And again, you can see how far I've got those off the back wall. You push those things back in the corners and they sound not nearly as good. And then um, there's my seats. I just got these recently from a friend who was reinvesting his uh, money from his home theater into a boat. So um, he, he gave me a killer deal on these. They look brand new. They were barely used. Only about a year old. Um, there's our Octane. I forget which model. But they're very comfortable. They're real leather. Um, the seats I had before this were that faux leather or whatever they call it. And um, to be honest with you, I'll, I'll never do that again. They were good seats, but the material just did not hold up real well. Um, those have power reclining headrests in it. As you can see, that one's kind of uh, all the way back. And you can see that one, how it's kind of tipped up a little bit. They have lights underneath it. You can turn on and off individually um, and then they have uh, the popcorn holders and then I got a uh, tablet holder there and um, a table another popcorn holder then here's my secondary screen for if I'm just pulling some information off the Marantz such as like Odyssey results or something like that I don't have to turn the projector on and my first set of side surrounds are my aerial acoustic CC I'm sorry that's the center channel the LR threes I believe they are. Um, they have a woofer right here in the front and then each side uh, each side has a minute tweeter in it so in the front and the back and those also have a switch on them where they can be monopole, bipole or dipole and I got those used as well and there's uh, the one on that side in front of my double doors into the room I still listen to vinyl sometimes, not as much as I listen to streaming or to um, CDs, but I still like to listen to vinyl once in a while. I don't think there has to be cancer. You can only listen to vinyl. You can only listen to digital. I see arguments back and forth. Vinyl sucks. No. Digital sucks. No. They both have their merits, so STFU, okay? <laughs> Sorry about that. Going off on a rant. But that is actually fed into the uh, Brooklyn tube because it has a um, analog input on it. Now it does have a, a built-in phono preamp in it, but I didn't like it, so I went out and got a Cambridge to put between the turntable and that, and then that again just feeds right now back to that two preamp behind the wall over there. And here's my second row of seats with my uh, little riser that I built that I didn't build high enough that I need to raise up a little bit. And then uh, when I bought this house, uh, it'll be four years in December, I got this second row um, to put in. And these are barely ever used, so they look brand new. Um, they are that leather match too, but they're a better grade of leather match than the front seats I had up front. And with, for as little use as they get, I should get several, hopefully several years out of those, I'm hoping. Um, and then just a couple little decorations. And then my middle row, of Atmos speakers, as I've explained before, this room's pretty deep, and I did not know the furniture layout um, when I was in the process of it. If I had to do it all over again, those front speakers would be closer to the front row, and that back row all the way back there, up by the lights, would have been much closer to the back seats, but 
Um, putting this middle row in, connecting one up to the front left and the other to the right rear Atmos channels, it worked out fine. Um, so coming to the back, my second set of at, um, side surround speakers, more for the back row. Just trying to get better coverage for all the channels throughout all the seats there. There's one and there's the other one. And then um, these are the bigger Martin Logan Descent eyes. These are uh, have three tens and a 750 watt RMS amp in each cabinet, and uh, I only use those for um, home theater. I don't use them when I'm listening to music. They're fine for music, but I just don't feel the need. I'm not. I enjoy bass, but I'm not what anybody would call a bass head. And then in the back are my former front speakers. These are the. Uh, Definitive Technology SC 7001s, and uh, those are the old BPVX. So, those used to be my side speakers, those used to be my front speakers. So, rather than selling them and trying to recoup anything for them, I just decided when I was building all this just to hook them up in the back. So, all these are fed uh, through cabling that runs over the ceiling. I had an an open room and a clean slate to work with so it worked out pretty well and then I've got the Alexa controlled uh, Philips Hue lights in here Alexa turn theater lights blue okay. I also have uh, motion sensors in here too when I open up the door the lights just come on Alexa turn theater lights bright white Okay, so that's back. So I'm just standing right now, uh, right behind the front row of seats, and uh, just go do a little turn around the room here, just to give you a little perspective of where everything is. Yeah. So I have a little table back there, just in case I wanna, you know, if I'm watching a game or something down here. I can throw a pizza or something on the table and have a couple drinks. come back around this way so that covers it you know and I'm not I'm, I will be asked part of the reason why I shot another video is I'm just really uh, pleased with the room and how I put it together um, you know I guess you could call it bragging a little bit and maybe I am a little bit I'll, I'm, I'm guilty of it but uh, this is my only hobby I know a lot of guys have multiple hobbies besides home theater but this is my only thing I I play around with other systems and stuff. I actually built a 1937, restored a 1937 Zenith radio recently, and then I restored a uh, 1970 um, Sears console stereo recently. So uh, that's what I do. That's what I love to do. And so uh, I guess I will end it there. And if you have any thoughts or comments or questions, please feel free. Take it easy, everybody. I'll talk to you down the road.